everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. We are in danger of Isaac Highway Blindness. Last run was 18 minutes long and ridiculously powerful. Let's not get attached to that. Let's have a good run, strong fundamentals, and keep our streak going. GZVT2XXS. Mom's pad? Pretty, pretty bad, um, but 3 HP is good, and Jesus Juice is a, is a good start uh, as far as augmenting our DPS. You know, the Kiss of Death what it takes to lose an Eden run in this day and age is basically low HP and bad DPS or ridiculously low HP. Either one or ridiculously low DPS, I guess. Either either one uh, in conjunction with nothing else. That was horrible. Could uh, could get it done. And it's an XL floor, so I did fuck up our deal with the Devil Chance there. But I think we're still okay. Um, so all we need to do is chart our course... Stick to it. We've got a little bit of a leg up on the competition. The fact that we start with... Don't take that yet. That could put us in a dangerous situation. But um, the fact that we start with a DPS upgrade and 3 HP is enough to basically say that the game has been extremely kind to us. And all we need uh, is, is to repay it in kind by not totally fucking it up. So getting extra HP means we can certainly come into our curse room and see if we get an advantage out of that. And we're ready for the boss fights already. Lock up, also good. Getting the body uh, allows us... Oh my god, that's... Very quick boss fight, but... Uh, getting the body does allow us to, to take that pill without feeling like... We're in a dangerous situation, and... At the very least, you know... Robo Baby 2.0 is terrible. It's a really bad item, and it's super annoying. But it's doing great work against the Duke of Flies. It's piercing. Toothpicks is a lovely item. It's going to do good work against Pin, presumably, as well. I mean, I should use Mom's Pad, like, at some point here. I don't know. And scares enemies and does a little damage. Hopefully, we still got to deal with the Devil, but if we did, it's just luck. We, we really didn't earn it. But I will take it, nonetheless, and I'm stoked. Mob the Void is a plus one damage upgrade, and Dark Matter is a plus one damage upgrade. So, we should... Uh, Say our thank yous to the Isaac God at this point, because getting this deal with the Devil is gonna have a ridiculous impact on this run, I think. Chub Dislike Smoke, I'm not sure if you guys knew that. It's been a while since we did Chub Dislike Smoke meme. Can't take it yet. Take this. Take this. I don't want to take it, just in case it's, uh, it's a bad trip. <laughs> I guess if it was bad trip, we would have been at full HP here. It's addicted. That also would have been pretty bad. Okay, this is fine though. Even though it might look like we're a little low on HP, we got a huge damage increase. We basically traded the body for a, a really, really good damage increase. Um, we have another bomb we can use to get that spirit heart, and Mob uh, the Void should allow us to get uh, extra spirit hearts regardless. We already got a demon heart and then another plus one damage upgrade. Being up three damage is ridiculous uh, from one floor. To put that in perspective, roughly that is the equivalent of being at full uh, money equals power bonus. Like from having money equals power and 99 cents. So of course that's enough to buy a, a bang and coat from the thrift shop as well. If we're doing... Hey uh, NL, thanks for the reference to the hottest uh, rap summer jam of... 2012. That's no problem. I mean, it's weird. I was just thinking. 2012. I was thinking about this the other day because, like, the Olympics, as much as I don't really care for the Summer Olympics, it's not because I, I don't think they're, like, poorly run or something like that. I just think, um, you know, I, I prefer the Winter Olympics because I'm, I'm a fan of ice hockey. And I'll call it ice hockey to be accommodating. It doesn't bother me, regardless of what Daniel Radcliffe says. Um, does, doesn't bother me at all. But, uh,. They're, they're kind of like signposts for life, right? Like, London 2012 was a game that I played on YouTube when it originally came out for the London 2012 Olympics. And now we're here four years later. That's crazy. That makes me feel like, you know, we've been, we've been doing this for a long time, and indeed we have. But um, it, it also puts some other things in perspective. If you started watching me in 2012, maybe you were in like ninth grade. Now you're in your first year of college or university or out there in the workforce or doing an apprenticeship or something. That's a, that's a huge life change. If you were in your first year of college or university, you are, uh, you're now graduated and, you know, doing post-grad or, again, being in the workforce or 
watching YouTube full time. Either way, you know you're gonna find your way. I have faith in you. Um, if you had a newborn child, that child would now be entering preschool or kindergarten. That's fucking crazy, you know. So f if you have been around that long, thanks for sticking it out. You know, I'm I'm proud of what we've done with the channel over that time. It sounds like a postmortem, but it's not really. It's just you know recognizing the the passage of time. It's crazy. I hope we're around in 2020 so we can go back and play some more London 2012 on the stream because for whatever reason that game is extremely addictive. I found it a very fun time. Four years is like, four years is the unit of progress until you're like in your 30s, I think. You know, I know David Bowie saying, you know, it's been five years, that's all we've got, but really it's four years. You know, high school, at least where in, in Canada and America, high school's four years. Are you really giving me one cent, two cents for each one of these? It's a little silly. Um, university tends to be four years, sometimes five if you do a double major, three if you're a little advanced. Um, you know, that's, that's the amount of time between the birth of a child and when they go to school. Most of the time, three or four years, sometimes five. I mean, I don't know, I always, I get into arguments over this with surprising regularity. I started junior kindergarten when I was three years old, but it's because I have a late birthday, and then also, we do kindergarten differently, like, it's compulsory or something, I don't know, it doesn't matter, you know, everybody, everybody's basically the same age when they graduated from high school anyway, unless they were left back, or they, you know, took a year off to go hang out or something like that, it doesn't matter, that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, four years is important, four years is the Olympics, and that makes it, it puts it even more in perspective that freaking, you know, Michael Phelps has been crushing it for like four Olympics in a row here. It's like, cool down, man. It's a little silly. Save some Olympics for the rest of us. Like, can you imagine being like a really good swimmer in the unprecedentedly long prime of Michael Phelps? That must suck. You're like, yeah, I mean, like I was probably like the best swimmer my country's ever seen, but unfortunately I was born within 16 years of Michael Phelps, so no gold medals for me. That's amazing, man. I don't understand. When people talk about Michael Phelps, they always talk about... Well, first off, him being an amazing swimmer. And secondly, that time he smoked a bong and someone took a video of it. But, like... To, it's it really... To even talk about anything but the fact that he's an amazing swimmer d diminishes his accomplishments to a ridiculous degree. You know, it's like being like, Yeah, Wayne Gretzky, you know, he's pretty good at hockey, but look, look at his stupid wine brand. Like, you know, you gotta... That's a once-in-a-generation athlete. Even if you don't care about sports, you've got to respect the level of, you know, the combination of, like, genetic lottery victory and then also passion and dedication. That requires to get to that point. I mean, people always ask me, they're like, NL, you're basically the Michael Phelps of the Binding of Isaac. How do you do it? And I'm like, well, you know how Michael Phelps smoked that bong? I said no to drugs, and I think that's why I'm kind of more relevant in the cultural... Uh, in the cultural uh, ram right now. That was not the right way to phrase that. But anyway, we got Tammy's head. Tammy's head is pretty great. We got Magic Mush on the last floor. I mean, in a way, I have to I have to concede. I sort of feel bad about how strong our runs today have been. I started recording videos today at like 12.30 in the afternoon. You know, just after what a normal person would consider their lunchtime. Um, and... I was like, we got Roundtable coming up a little later today. Maybe I can fit in two Isaac episodes. This is the fourth Isaac episode, and it's going fast. Like, this one even is, is quick as well. And I'm not really rushing them. It's not like I was like, okay, we're going to get as many Isaac runs done as possible today. It's just from like a time management standpoint. You're like, okay, we got like an hour and a half. That might be enough for two. Usually I like to budget about 45 minutes to an hour per Isaac episode, and... The vast majority of the time that ends up being too much, which is exactly what you want when you estimate the time of something. How do you... This is going to be a hot button issue, but at least it gives us something to talk about while we, you know, potentially cruise to our next run unless we run... Or next win unless we run into a uh, reroll room. How do you deal with punctuality? This is a question... I wish I'd brought it up on the NLSS, but I know Nick and I, and he's probably watching this right now, we feel the same way about punctuality. I would rather be an hour early for something than be two minutes late. And I don't understand, you know, in my brain why that is. And I also understand that when people who are punctual, and I, I tend to be, 
when people who are punctual talk about punctuality, they tend to do so in a way... I'll tell you what, we'll take Perthro. In a way that glorifies them. That punctuality is always good, and um, being late is always bad. That is true to an extent, but I think... You know, if you're going to a doctor's office, they'd be like, yeah, show up two minutes late. Who gives a shit? Don't show up an hour early. That's ridiculous. You're going to clog up the waiting room. Like, don't you have stuff to do with your time as well? I recognize that, that being early is sometimes self-serving. But I have to ask, for those of you who, you know, you said you were going to be somewhere at 5 o'clock. And then your friend texts you at 5.10 and is like, hey, where are you? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm almost there. And you haven't even left your house. What the fuck is wrong with you? What went wrong in your life that this happened? That's incredibly disrespectful. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in the, the uh, statement that 10 minutes early is, is on time. Five minutes early is late. I think it's, that's some, like, American military bullshit or something. Although it, you know, can be a helpful attitude. But, what, I, I, I had friends like that in university. And they may be listening right now. I'm not throwing you under the bus, you know. You're a great man. But you'd be like, hey, my friend invited me to his place tonight. I'm supposed to be there at 7. It's 7.30. He just texted me, say, where are you? And uh, I haven't even taken a shower yet. And I texted him back and said, we're right around the corner. We'll be there any minute now. You know, it's just, that's just a lie. That's just a, a GD lie, isn't it? You're a liar, Mr. Lundegaard. A fucking liar. That was the best impression I've ever done. So goodbye, Sylvester Stallone and Michael Caine impression. This is that is my new best impression. Uh, angry husband who really does not want that true coat from the 1996 Coen Brothers film Fargo. You're a liar, Mr. Lundegaard. It's a little bit like a, a Rick from Rick and Morty, I guess, as well. You know what? You want to see blank card per throw? I'll give you a blank card per throw. We also got Bloody Lust, which is pretty exceptional. But I don't get it, like, I, I guess, what, what I've read from people who are, uh, who tend to be not punctual, not punctual, they always estimate, like, the bare minimum amount of time that it takes someone to get somewhere. Like, they think, okay, I gotta be to work at 9 in the morning. How long does it take to shower? Well, one time in my entire life, I took a shower in a minute and a half. So, let's budget a minute and a half for a shower. How long could it possibly take me to get dressed? 15 seconds, and then another 15 seconds to eat breakfast. So, really, I think all I gotta do is get up at like 8.54, and I should be able to get to work by 9. Whereas, and I, I, if Nick's watching, I, I hope he'll relate to this. I'm not gonna force him to relate to us, but I hope he'll relate to this. You're like, okay, I've got an exam at 9 in the morning. What time do I need to get up? Well... The longest shower I've ever taken in my life was probably 25 minutes. So let's give ourselves 45 minutes for a shower. I know I said 25 first. This is how it works. And then, um, well, I have slept through alarms in the past. So I think I'm going to set eight alarms. The exam's at nine. So the first alarm we're going to have go off at seven. And then another one at 7.05, 7.10, 7.15, 7.30, uh, eight. And then another alarm at 8.10 that says, seriously wake up in case you haven't seen this. And then another alarm at 8.45. That alarm exists just in case I fell asleep on the bus on the way to the exam. Like, there's there's some there's some mental there's some mental stuff going wrong on both sides of the equation is all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to throw everybody who's perpetually late under the bus. I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there's something wrong with both of us. But uh, I guess in the end, it is better to be early than to be late. And I, I would agree with that. And I... Uh, I live my life by those tenets. You know, if if I'm like 15 minutes late for something, and I can't text them and be like, I'm so sorry, something went terribly wrong in my upbringing and I'm late and I know that it, it reflects very poorly on me as a person, I might as well just not show up. At that point, it's like, oh fuck, 15 minutes late, all right, uh, put your, Put your head up to the lamp and make it seem like you have a fever and then be like, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. I'm just really sick right now. <laughs> you know, like, that's that's where I have to go at that point. Might as well buy a key. Who cares, right? But this is not... Don't, don't take this, by the way, as me giving an excuse to those of you. And this is not based on something that happened in my life recently or anything like that. It's just something that popped in, you know. We're doing a lot of stream of consciousness sort of dialogue here. Um, so it is, uh, you know, things will just pop up there. But if you're gonna be late, just text someone and say you're late. Everybody knows even punctual people can be late. 
You don't control the weather, you don't control the traffic, you don't control, you know, the germs within your body, you don't control if your kid gets sick or, you know, something comes up. It happens all the time. But just be, you know, be communicative about it. Text somebody, say, you know, I'm gonna be late, real sorry. Don't be like, yeah, I'm almost there. That is, if you can break one bad habit, make that your, like, September bad habit to break. Actually, make it your one step closer to the edge and I'm about to break. So I, I didn't even really feel that strongly about Mom's wig, but I figured like our damage is so good. We might as well at least take a chance on doing this. Mom's wig is pretty good, and we have Hive Mind, and we have um, uh, we have Ma of the Void, so we're gonna be generating Black Hearts. But I'm really just doing this. Can I be honest with you? I'm padding out the video, and I'm not padding it out with with filler. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna do my damnedest to bring you the same kind of high-quality shitposting commentary that you've come to expect. But I don't want to put up, like, another 18-minute video and have people think that, oh, NL's just, uh... You know, finally, now what's what's next? He's gonna start splitting the Isaac episodes up into, you know, ten parts? No, it's not gonna happen. It does also have the added benefit of maybe giving us another great item, but... The real reason I'm doing this is to add, you know, I, I haven't gotten into a flow state in Isaac. And selfishly, I do also worry about Isaac Highway Blindness. Like, if we do one more run soon, our brain might be like, okay, we've got, you know, 8 out of 10 on the damage scale already, when maybe we actually only have a 2 or a 3. So, I think it's important to, you know, continue to challenge yourself. I think it's, you know, what I, I've started to kind of, like, realize as I've gotten older. You know, I used to approach things like like nutrition or school or like learning a new skill or organizations or something like that or organization not organizations you know like keeping things clean is like you know i can't wait until i've finished learning this skill i can't wait until i've you know lost 10 pounds you know that's going to be the day when i can finally slack off it's not the way it works man you gotta you gotta respect the routine and the process that allows you to learn otherwise you're dead you know, if you start slacking off once you've lost 10 pounds, I'm not saying you can't take your pedal off the gas or your 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 foot off the gas pedal uh, a little bit. Why why take Spelunker's hat when we have blank card per throw? But you know, you got to keep yourself relatively strong so that you don't backslide, and that's that's what's important. You know, I respect uh, that in Isaac, the game gives us a lot of opportunities to continually challenge ourselves uh, with like voluntary kind of extra challenges. So if we want to, uh, we can we can make our lives harder. And everyone they always ask questions, why make your life why make your life harder? Why do things the hard way? Sometimes there's, you know, validity to that. There's not always a good reason to reinvent the wheel. We can fly. Um, however, sometimes there's a great reason to make your life harder and the, the reason you want to make your life harder is because it's going to make it easier in the future. Respect the struggle to some extent. You know, it's not always about I, I, I truly believe this, even though it sounds ridiculous. And I, I recognize that some of my beliefs probably are ridiculous. But, um, you know, it is it is human to struggle. You know, you think Richard Branson is like, I made it, I'm a billionaire, now I can just slack off. No, I'm sure that, you know, his problems are on a different magnitude than, than ours. Um, but they're still there. Like Serena Williams, I'm, I'm sure that she's not like, I'm pretty dope at tennis, you know, let's go spend an extra day at the spa or something like that. I'm sure she's like, you, you want me to take a fucking spa day when I have to maintain my place as the number one tennis professional in the Women's Pro Tour? You know, it, it's it's human to, to continue to struggle and to continue to fight. It's also human to be real lazy about things, and I know all about that side as well, but... You know, I think... Uh, in particular, it's an attitude that's bothered me like when I got out of high school. And there was something, like, a lot of people were like, can't wait to go to college, it's gonna be dope. But a lot of people were like, I finished high school, joke's on you, planet Earth, I never have to learn anything again as long as I live. And I'm like, ooh, that's a bad attitude. You should, you should love learning, man. Learning is like leveling up in an RPG, but in real life. Ooh, Coat Hanger's pretty good. And that's like the, the worst, like, PSA way to put it in real time. But it's, it's like RimWorld, man. RimWorld models it with, with, uh reasonable conceptual accuracy you know you spend time in the kitchen you're gonna learn how to cook the better you are at cooking even if it's not a big part of your life it makes you a better survivor you know and I think that there's something to be said for that but and I don't know I've gotten I've gotten too preachy today 
I don't mean to get preachy, because my number one central belief, of course, is that we as human beings know nothing. So, don't listen to me. Do whatever you want to do. But learn how to cook. That's a valuable skill. Everyone always tries to... They're like, hey, you should learn how to cook so you can cook ladies breakfast after you have a one-night stand with them. How about, like, you should learn how to cook so you're not eating Hot Pockets, you know, cooked in the microwave when you're 35 years old. Look, cooking is just science with food. It's science you can eat, man. It's, it's the greatest scientific pastime of all. And you don't even need to have amazing cooking skills to be a decent chef. You just need to be able to follow a recipe and be like, okay, this is far too hot for this. This is not hot enough. You know, take the steak off before um, the inside is the, you know, the blackest black and no light can escape from it. You know, it's relatively simple to be at least a decent chef. Or decent cook, I should say. I don't want, and there's obviously the culinary arts. I'm not trying to in insinuate that it takes no talent to, you know, be a, be a great chef. Restaurant quality especially, but and I see people that are like, and probably many, a, a decent proportion of people watching this are probably like, I have no idea how to cook. You really do. All, to be like a 5 out of 10 cook, all you need to be able to do is follow a recipe and, and operate your stove. If you can't operate your stove or oven, this is literally like a two minute tutorial. Just get that shit done. Say the laundry. I, people, if you're in your, if you're an adult and you don't know how to operate a laundry machine, like a washer and a dryer, what are you doing? I think we should fight Hush on this one. It's so early. Like, I am an idiot. I cannot put together, like, a 64-piece jigsaw puzzle. I am functionally barely able to operate in society, okay? I probably should take the golden key here first. See? Case in point. And a washing machine, you need to know, like, four buttons. On ours, you push the power button, you twist the knob to normal, you press start. That's it. And you, don't forget, you do have to put your clothes in it. You know, that's important. And some soap. But that's about it. The dryer's even easier. You just put wet clothes in it, push the button, set the timer. 60 minutes later, you got dry clothes, man. Oh, good. We turned uh, unicorn stump into unicorn horn. Lovely. These are like basic levels of... I don't, I don't know how that happens. Now, the important thing is there's no such thing as, as stupid questions. I believe this. I mean, of course, there are questions that are idiotic. But, I, you know, it's more important to look stupid and ask a stupid question that teaches you something than it is to remain forever in ignorance. Just, if you have to Google it, if you have to Google how to use a washing machine, it's worth it. It's worth it for you to develop this life skill. Every man in our generation that looks good in a suit had to Google how to tie a tie, okay? It just happens. They had to practice it in the mirror a few times before they went to their modeling contract. You gotta start somewhere. There really should be, like, a school for adults. It's just like a weekend school. And you take a test when you're, like, 28. I say that because I would be exempt from the test for the next few months, I guess. You take a test in your, in your mid to late 20s. And you just go in and they go, hey... Put these clothes in the washing machine and, and make them clean. And if you pass it, they're like, alright, you're good. Or they say, like, they'll give you, like, two eggs and be like, make some scrambled eggs. And if, you, if it's not, if you can't do it, they're like, you know, no judgment here. Come in for our 45-minute class next Sunday. We'll give you your license and you're, you're free to be an adult again. And there's probably some things here that I would benefit from as well. I don't want to paint it like I'm the super adult or anything. As, as Kate would probably attest, if they offered a class on how to fold a t-shirt so that it wasn't wrinkly as fuck, I would probably be, like, super into that. Um, how, to, how to load a dishwasher in an efficient fashion instead of just putting everything where you find it right, right from the get-go. That's valuable. Um, I could definitely see that being a useful life skill for myself as well. I would, I would welcome this. Again, you know, to learn is to live, man. To learn is to live. It's like leveling up. But certainly, I think I can skip the 100 level classes. Like, if you don't know how to boil water, we gotta talk. There's literally something you just put water in. And then, like, you, you could do it on the stove, of course. But there's also just an electric kettle. You just put water in it, push the button. Shouldn't be... Shouldn't be that bad. I'm trying to think of, like, what I'm... Well, here's, here's one. You know what class I would love to see? I like to turn the lens inward so that you don't just feel like I'm shit-talking you if I'm speaking to you right now. I have no idea why there's so many soaps. 
Why is there a bathroom cleanser that's different from the soap that you use to mop your floors, that's different from, you know, the soap that you use to clean your bathtub, that's different from the soap that you use to clean your tile, it's like... I don't need this many soaps. That's a lot of pressure, I think, from a, from a soap-related... Okay, this is actually very scary now. Please just die. We're s relatively safe right now. I just wish you would die before you do one more attack. Okay, we, that was that was scary. We got through it, but that was scary. Like, as far as I'm concerned, there's just too many soaps. People should get over it, okay? Maybe this is the hero font. We should be fine regardless, but... There's just too many soaps. Slow down on the whole soaps. There should be like two soaps. This soap can go on your skin, this soap can't. That's it. Did you know, by the way, and this is, you know how I said there's no such thing as stupid questions? I'm about to bring something up, and you're gonna be like, of course this is how it works, you moron. But I'm gonna bring it up regardless, because I think it's important, if there's 10% of people out there that didn't know this, I think that this is important to, to teach the world. And I'll take the, the mantle of being the idiot, if that makes you feel better. The idiot who didn't know this and is now sharing it. Did you know that... Uh, except for antibacterial soaps, soaps don't work by killing bacteria. They work by actually just physically getting the bacteria off your hands. Like it creates basically the science of it is that, uh, you know how you get oil on your hands, you can't really wash it off with water because oil is hydrophobic, which means that it's, um, uh, it repels water effectively. But, uh, soap is also hydrophobic. So you like surround, okay, now I'm in pseudoscience and I'll fully admit it. But now like the this, this soap forms a layer around the dirt and then allows the water to wash it away effectively. Um, or allows the, the oil to be washed away effectively, etc, etc. I probably explained that very poorly, but you get the gist of it. I had always taken it for granted that how does soap work? Kills bacteria. Some soap does, but only if it's labeled as antibacterial. Most soap just works by washing the bacteria off your hands. And you know what? Apparently that's fine. I know a lot of people's first inclination is gonna be like, well, give me that antibacterial soap. Look, washing your hands is extremely important. We talked about this on the show ad nauseum. Washing your hands is, is a central tenet in, you know, avoiding epidemics and stuff like that and just not getting sick yourself. But I doubt that the kind of soap you use is going to... People are so paranoid about getting sick all the time. Oh, that... You know, vegetable, that little piece of carrot fell on our floor that we cleaned yesterday. You know, don't eat it, you might get sick. Has that ever happened to anybody? Has any any of you ever gone to the doctor and been like... But first off, this is in the house. If this happened in a restaurant, I'd be like, I paid for a clean fucking carrot. But, um, any of you ever gone to the doctor? And then, oh, I feel bad. And the doctor's like, well, did you eat a carrot that spent two seconds on the floor? There's your problem. You got, you know, you know, butt worms. Sorry to tell you. Definitely this is a Perthrow situation. Um, I just like... People are so paranoid about about getting ill. The number of people I know... And it, I'm putting some of y'all on blast. That get food poisoning more than I even knew was possible is ridiculous. Everybody... If you look on like Google reviews for, for websites... Every restaurant has given somebody food poisoning. And I have to think like... When you say you have food poisoning, you should actually have to provide like a stool sample to the restaurant that they can then send to like an independent doctor. Because I think you might just have diarrhea, dog. People are always like, you know, I ate at uh, McDonald's yesterday and then I took a really bad shit. McDonald's gave me food poisoning. That's not necessary. You might just have like Norwalk or something like that, man. I don't know. And I'm not saying that all cases of food poisoning are, um, are bunk. You know, obviously there's a lot of legitimate cases of food poisoning. It's probably one of the most common ailments on like an annual basis. However, there's always, like, sometimes I eat the same thing as somebody else, and then they're like, my stomach hurts, I think I have food poisoning. And I'm like, I think your stomach might just hurt. I think, like, it's okay. I'm just gonna pop this. Ooh, Ipecac, why not? Um, I'm just like... People are so quick to call food poisoning on anything. Sometimes you just get a tummy ache, man. You got lots of biological processes going on down there. Or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a fucking doctor. Again, what's... Say it with me. What's the number one thing when NL goes on a rant? The number one thing is he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is just one man's opinion. And, uh... I'm not saying that to absolve me of being incorrect. Rather, just to say that I'm probably incorrect. Excuse me. There we go. And people get attached to it, too. They're like, no. 
I know I had 27 meals in the past five days, but I know that it was Burger King that gave me food poisoning. It certainly wasn't the eggs that were two days past due. That's ridiculous. It certainly wasn't the butter that I left down on the on the the counter. That's where you leave butter. Certainly wasn't that weird looking apple that I ate despite the fact that it looked weird as heck. It was definitely the restaurant that is frequently audited by the health department. And again, I'm not saying that Burger King's never given anybody food poisoning. I just think people are really quick to, to pull out the food poisoning. Eating at a restaurant and then having one bad poop does not equal food poisoning. Shit in your pants might equal food poisoning, but your grandma probably gave it to you just as likely as uh, the Burger King did. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.